Believe it or not, Southampton has only won one major trophy during their existence, the 1976 FA Cup. Their story is pretty crazy if you think about it. They floated among the bottom tiers of English football really for a long time before their eventual return to the Premier League in the 2012-13 season. Since then, it has been a rapid rise for the Saints as they are now considered a solid mid-table side that could and have potentially pushed for Europa League football. However, following this rapid rise and the departure of manager Ronald Koeman, things have slowly started to stagnate for the team from the South. We're going to be taking on a highly requested challenge here. Our final rebuild of FIFA 17 will be with Southampton. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. As I said, welcome to the final rebuild of FIFA 17. 100% this series will be returning in FIFA 18. And considering this is the final rebuild, I would just like to take a quick second to thank you guys so much, unbelievably so much from the bottom of my heart for the support you guys have shown this series throughout FIFA 17. Not even joking here, this series has genuinely changed my life. When I started my first rebuild with Manchester United in, I think it was early February, I was only on 30,000 subscribers. Now, I'm on 130,000 subscribers. It honestly just blows my mind to think about it. And I'd just, I'd like to thank you guys for putting me in this awesome situation. But enough with the heartfelt, soppy little stuff we're going to get into today's rebuild. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like. Realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. So if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild, make sure that you leave a like. And also, if you are new around here, make sure that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button. So here is our starting 11 for this first season. It's not a bad side. I know it's slightly, like this rebuild, the rebuilds from now on, considering the new season's already started, are gonna be slightly unrealistic. Like we still have Jay Rodriguez and he's placed for West Brom now. So I've left him on the bench, but here is our starting 11 for this first season. Pretty excited to see what we can do. We are in the Europa League, so it would be nice to go deep in that, but my main goal for this first season is to give the Champions League a proper push. So a pretty damn big pickup already in this rebuild. I was surprised when I saw Manchester City accept this and for Raheem Sterling to even accept this contract offer. We're improving our squad straight away. Raheem Sterling coming in for 30 million pounds, which is, if you think about it, that's a pretty insane price in today's market and for an English player. But welcome to Southampton, Raheem Sterling. And you guys know that I love bringing in decent quality keepers in rebuilds. You can't win in simulations on FIFA unless you have a quality goalkeeper. We've gone ahead, improved our keeper position. Sergio Rico from Sevilla coming in for 21 and a half million. And our first player departure here, he might have left for West Brom in real life, but Jay Rodriguez is off to Goodison Park for 6 million. So Shane Long is off to the Bundesliga. He's moving to Mines for 6.4 million pounds. So on the eve of our match against Manchester United, we have a very difficult decision. Do we sign Rafinha? or Aaron Ramsey as our new main central midfielder. Now, Ramsey, 23 million. Rafinha, 18 million. Ramsey is three overall higher, but they both have the exact same potential. Do I go with the ready-made product in Aaron Ramsey, or do I go for 
a player that's going to take a little longer to develop, but could be an absolute beast in Rafinha. I've got to do it, lads. I have to go for someone that is going to get us results this season. Aaron Ramsey, welcome to Southampton. Rafinha, we might see you again in the future. So, with one hour remaining on transfer deadline day, we have sold Fraser Forster to West Ham for £11 million. Great goalkeeper, but we've got Rico, so we don't need him. So... I'm pretty damn impressed with the business we've done, if I'm being honest. We'll have a look now at what we've done. So, we've brought in Raheem Sterling, Rico and Ramsey, gotten rid of Jay Rodriguez, Shane Long and Fraser Forster. Spurs brought in Jamie Vardy, but I'm really happy with the squad we've been able to build. Here it is right now. We're going to give a good run in this season. We're going to simulate now to January. I'll see you then. Holy moly, so I thought we were going to do well. But not this well. Halfway through the Premier League season, we are top of the table. We have a team to beat. Only one point ahead of Arsenal, but five points ahead of United. Obviously still 19 games to go, and we could still get relegated. We could still finish mid-table. There's a strong chance we will. But to be top of the table at this point is definitely a big confidence booster. If we can improve our squad further, then in January, then there's no reason why we can't continue this form. That's actually mental, but... Taking a look at the drop zone, it is a very tight relegation race. Leicester City, last year's premiers, last, year, last year's champions in the game are sitting dead last. Burnley, Swansea, and Middlesbrough all on 17 points. So it's very tight at the bottom, and most importantly, very tight at the top of the table. Although he has signed for Manchester United in real life, he's still at Benfica in FIFA 17, so we're gonna make full advantage of that. We're gonna sign Lindelof, the Swedish centre-back from Benfica, for 15 and a half million. So despite the signing of Lindelof, it's been a pretty non-eventful January transfer window. Sometimes, or most of the time, January tends to be. Anyways, we're gonna simulate to the end of the season now and see if we can defy the odds, do a Leicester City, and win the Premier League title in our first bloody season. I'll see you in a second. So, unfortunately, we weren't able to hold on to our lead at the top of the table. We have dropped down to fourth position. Fortunately, however, that means we get a shot at completing the rebuild next season. Although I'm not overly confident at our chances, it's still going to be good to have a good crack at it and really measure our Ourselves. But I'm honestly quite just pleased to even be in the top four. I thought maybe Europa League again, maybe get around that mid-table spot, but to be qualified in fourth position, that's damn good. The three sides going down are going to be Sunderland, Burnley, and Hull. So virtually the three that went down in real life last season besides Middlesbrough. Taking a look at the other competitions, we did make it to the last 16 of the FA Cup. Same deal with the EFL Cup. Manchester United, two titles in a row. Actually, did they win the Premier League? They did too. So Man United have done the treble. Not that we were in it, but hopefully we can be around this stage next year. Juventus, they defeated Man oh, sorry, Real Madrid in the Champions League final, but look at the bottom quarterfinals draw. Oh god, who says FIFA isn't realistic? Bayern Munich defeated Arsenal. But for us in the Europa League, we made it to the semi-finals, which is really impressive. We beat, who did we beat? We beat Zenit, Villarreal, and then we lost to Schalke who ended up winning the whole thing. So all in all, I'd say it's been a pretty successful first season. Here is our squad report at the end of the first season. We've built quite an impressive squad. Really excited to see where we can develop this squad. Uh, a few positions, I probably think we need to upgrade maybe our right back spot a little bit, maybe get rid of Classy or upgrade on Classy. Might even try going in for Rafinha again next season, but our squad's pretty balanced overall. I'm really happy. We, we got lucky where we, we inherited quite a decent side and then we did quite well with our transfer business so far this season. So that will conclude what has been a very, very decent first season in this Southampton rebuild. Excited to see what we can achieve in season two in the Champions League. Let's get into it right now. 
So my first order of business for this second season is to bring in a brand new, younger sort of attacking midfielder to replace Dusan Tadic. Want to get rid of him and want to bring in some fresh, growing blood. So Ross Barkley almost signed for Chelsea on deadline day, but he is going to sign for us here. Ross Barkley, welcome to Southampton. So two more player departures here. Alex McCarthy off to Watford for eight and a half million and Dusan Tadic off to Villarreal for 21 million pounds. We've done some good progress there or some good business there. So I told you I'd want to come back in for him. We've got the finances and he has grown quite rapidly in that first season. So Rafinha, we gave up on you last season, but justice has been served. It's all good in the hood right now. Rafinha coming to Southampton for 26 million pounds. And with the signing of Rafinha, our starting 11 is actually looking pretty damn quality. I mean, our back, every virtually every position, the players are going to grow into absolute beasts. I think I'm going to try saving money for this season and then I think eventually, if we don't make the final this season, we can do it next season by selling on Gabbiadini because he'll be worth a lot. He's got half decent potential. Going in, getting a world-class striker. Probably looked to keep Bufal for the time being. He is, has very good, I think he's got 85 potential, 84, something like that. And then maybe going for a new right back. Cedric still a lot of time to grow. This is just a very good high potential squad. Another player departure there, Oriel Romeu. In fact, I think he's our first. No, he's not. We've sold, what am I talking about? We've sold lots of players so far this season, but Oriel Romeu off the Augsburg for 9 million. So we have a very difficult task now. It is the Champions League playoff round against Salzburg. And I'm saying it's difficult because Rico, our goalkeeper, is out for six weeks. So we have a 71 rated Paolo Gazaniga who has gone to Spurs in real life. He's going to be our goalkeeper. Also, we have Lindelof out with injury, but fortunately, Caceres is still the same overall as him, so he can slot in there. Although, Lindelof is back. Okay, good, but Gazaniga, he is in goals for us, which isn't going to be too good. Hopefully, we can just outscore them. We are on the road. Bergeron gets us an away goal in the third minute. Come on, let's get through to the group stages. It's two legs, of course. Let's just pile on the away goals. Still 1-0 in our favour into the second half. Come on, can we keep the clean sheet? I just jinxed us. Oberlin gets them the goal. Barkley gets us a second away goal. 15 minutes to go. Can we get a third away goal? That would be huge. No, we can't. 2-1 up. Two away goals. That is a solid result. Oh, I just realised. I was thinking of Red Bull Leipzig. Red Bull Salzburg is a lot easier. Although, although we can't take them lightly because they have some quality players, but I was thinking it was Leipzig all the time. So, a massive boost ahead of our second matchup against Red Bull Salzburg. Leven Kazawa is gonna sign for us. One of the highest potential left backs in the game coming from PSG for 25 and a half million pounds. It just wouldn't be a FIFA 17 rebuild if we didn't get this guy. Welcome to Southampton. So a huge game here for the rebuild. The second leg of the playoffs. We are at home at St. Mary's. Still without Rico. We have Gazaniga still in between the sticks. Kazawa making his Southampton debut. As my dog decides to go crazy in the background. Apologies if you can hear the little shit barking. But anyways, let's get the result here. Let's see if we can extend our lead nice and early. Rafinha with the penalty gets in there. The dog's going absolutely mental. But there's no stopping. There's no restart. And we've got to go through nearing halftime here. Come on, fellas. We're up 3-1 at the moment. A second goal will get us through to the Champions League group stages. A big effort ahead for Red Bull Salzburg. They need two goals. To Ramsey makes it 2-0. We're going to be going through. Kazawa picks up an injury. Hope it's not bad. But we're going through to the Champions League group stages. <sighs> you are kidding me. The transfer curse for the rebuild series continues. Levin Kazawa out for eight weeks. 
not a good debut. So that is going to conclude the opening window for this second season. And just like the first, we have done very impressive business. Barkley, Rafinha and Kazawa all into our Southampton squad. Dusan Tadic, McCarthy and Romayu all leaving. So that's going to conclude the opening transfer window for season two. So we have been placed into Group G of the Champions League. Two big dogs. Well, one massive dog in there and another decently sized club in Wolfsburg. But we've got Juve, Wolfsburg and Braga from the Portuguese League. So I think we have a half decent shot at getting out of this group. Juve is, of course, going to be the biggest competition, but if we could pip Wolfsburg, then who knows? We might make it into the knockout round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate to when we finish our last group stage game and we'll have a look. It'll be about five minutes for me and two seconds for you. I'll see you in a second. So we topped our Champions League group on goal difference. We tied with Juventus on 10 points, but overall it seemed to be a pretty close group. Wolfsburg actually finished last in the group and we are through to the Champions League last 16. A massive opponent, a massive task as we take on PSG. Thankfully, they don't have Neymar at this stage. Otherwise, I would be absolutely bricking it at the moment. So here we are halfway through the Premier League season and definitely not as good as it was last season, sitting in 8th position on 30 points. That being said, we're only 4 points out of the top 3 or out of 3rd position, but we need to step things up in the second half of the season and get some more wins together. It seems we've had a lot of draws, so turn a few of those draws into wins and we'll be good to go. Looking at the drop zone, it is Brighton, Middlesbrough and Leeds all struggling. Swansea pretty close as well. So a big pick up here, our first pre-contract signing for this Southampton rebuild. 88 rated Bern Leno from Bayer Leverkusen coming into the club. He's four overall higher than Rico, so that means we'll sell Rico at the start of next season and turn it around and make a lot of profit off this transfer. Welcome, Bern. So it's been a somewhat dull January window. As I said last time out, tend to be dull in January. No transfer offers really that I was willing to do. Bern Leno coming in next season on a free. But now, let's get into the Champions League round of 16 against PSG and see how our squad stacks up. So here it is, the biggest game in the rebuild so far. Away in Paris, taking on PSG. No Cedric as our right back for today's game. He is suspended, so Caceres taking his spot. But we have a decent side of course, Kazawa used to play for PSG, but they have an insane squad. Draxler, Griezmann, who scores the opening goal. Blaise Matuidi as well. Oh, that's not the start we're after for. Sterling, though, gets us an away goal and an equaliser. The away goals are absolutely huge. Half an hour to go here. Can we get a second goal and give us a big advantage heading into our home leg? Five minutes to go. Come on, lads. No, one all. Still not a bad result. Massive second leg coming up here. At home, at St. Mary's. PSG taking us on. Cedric back into the starting 11. Full strength for this second leg. We have the away goal advantage. So if we keep them scoreless, we go through. I've probably just jinxed us. But let's watch and let's see. 25 minutes through. Sterling gets us the lead. So we're 2-1 up at, on aggregate at the moment. They equalize. So it's all tied up. Barkley puts us back in front. Lindelof injured. 3-2 up. So if they score another goal, they'll go through on away goals. We need a second goal here to make things safer. Come on. Get another goal. Or just keep it this way. We're going to win 2-1 against PSG. And I'm actually quite surprised that we won that. We're through to the quarterfinals. So another difficult opponent here. The Champions League quarterfinals. We are going to be taking on Atletico Madrid. From this stage on, we're going to be taking on someone difficult. So Atletico Madrid is our next hurdle on hopeful glory. 
The first leg is away at the Estadio Vincente Calderon, taking on Diego Simeone's men from Atletico Madrid. No Aaron Ramsey for this first leg, who is out for suspension. James Ward-Prowse, though, is a pretty decent replacement. He's 81 rated now, so he's grown quite nicely. Their squad is half decent. Carrasco, Felipe Luis, Cranvita. Of course, they don't have Griezmann, who we just knocked out. Jan Oblak in between the sticks, though, is decent. Barkley gets us an away goal, though. Ward-Prowse makes it 2-0. We've got two away goals here against Atletico Madrid. Holy crap, we are in the driver's seat. Let's keep a clean sheet. Maybe get a third. Doesn't look like it. No, but that is massive. 2-0 in the away leg in the quarterfinals. What the hell? Will we manage to qualify for the Champions League semifinals at our first time of asking? 2-0 up here. Two away goals up against Atletico Madrid. Ross Barkley, sorry, Aaron Ramsey back into it. This is big. This is really big. We need a strong start. They've got Stefan de Vries, Eriksen. Where were all these players in the first leg? They've brought out their big guns for the second leg. Still nil all though. It's looking good. We want it to stay like this. If they don't score, then we go through. There's half an hour to go. Come on, fellas. Somebody bag a goal and secure it. Surely they're not going to score two goals. Ten minutes to go. We're going through. Yes. What? I am genuinely shocked that we have defeated PSG and Atletico Madrid. Southampton are through to the Champions League semi-final. Southampton fans, this surely gives you hope. If your owners go out there, splash the cash, you could be into the Champions League semis within two seasons. It just gets harder and harder, but I, I've got to say, if we make the final, we will deserve to be there. Bayern Munich versus Southampton in the Champions League semi-finals. The other semi-final is another German team, Borussia Dortmund. They take on and they've drawn with Barcelona. Let's focus on ourselves. Let's somehow get into the Champions League final. I'm going in slightly optimistic, but I don't know, man. It is time. The first leg at home, taking on Bayern Munich. We've got a full strength starting 11. I'm quite interested to see what Ancelotti's starting 11 looks like. Surely Neuer's going to be in goals. Neuer's there. Lewandowski, Sanchez, Kimmich, Boateng. They really haven't bought... What? Van Dijk gives us the lead. Costa equalizer though. So they get an away goal, which is not what we want at all. Let's not let them score another one. Let's get back in the lead. Gabbiadini injured, which could... Really hurt us in the long run. No, Costa gets a second away goal. Oh, God. So they have two away goals advantage heading into the home leg at the Allianz. The second leg here, our backs against the wall. Traveling to the Allianz, 2-1 down. We need away goals. We need to score at least twice. We need two goals. Come on, Gabbiadini's going to have to step up. No, Costa, you're killing me, man. Oh, Costa scored three goals. Sterling gets us an away goal, but gets injured. Oh, dear. This has gone bad to us. Kimmich has virtually just put us in the grave. So, what's that make? That makes it 4-2. We're going to need three, no, two goals, and we'll go through on away goals. But we've got 20 minutes to do it. It's not looking good. Muller makes it 3-1. There it is. We're going to be eliminated. We've met our match. Fair play, Bayern Munich have killed us, but what a fairy tale run that would have been. So pretty frustratingly, we haven't qualified for the Champions League again next season. We finish in sixth position. I mean, I guess next season we'll get a good opportunity to focus just on the Premier League, improve our squad, fly through it, and hopefully qualify again for the Champions League. Manchester City did go on and win the Premier League title, and Brighton and Leeds are going straight back down. Middlesbrough going where they belong in the Championship. Newcastle, Bournemouth, and Swansea surviving by the skin of their teeth. The FA Cup was a disappointment as well. Once again, not making it to the last 16. We were eliminated by Man City in the last 16 of the EFL Cup. We did lose to the eventual champions in Bayern Munich. They defeated Barcelona 2-0 in the Champions League, that is. And Liverpool, they win the Europa League on penalties. So season two was almost a fairy tale season. Let's get into season three and see if we can find our groove 
and get back into the Champions League. So our first player departure for this third season is going to be Josh Sims off to Ipswich for 1.6 million. So Cedric unfortunately wanted out of the club. We've had to sell him and even more unfortunately, it's for a Premier League rival, but Cedric is off to the Etihad, off to Pep Guardiola's Man City. So we've straight away found our replacement for Cedric. It is going to be a Premier League proven player a former Southampton player, Nathaniel Klein, coming back to Southampton. Welcome back, buddy. A monster pickup here. A great piece of business. I said I wanted to bring in a new world-class striker in the third season. I said I wanted to get rid of Gabbiadini. And I said I wanted to get rid of Sergio Rico. Now, we've done the best because... 32 million plus Rico, who we didn't need, means we can get Akadi and at this stage still have Gabbiadini as a backer. So here we are with one hour to go in the window. Yet again, a very efficient window. Three transfers in Bern Leno, Nathaniel Klein, and Mauro Akadi. Rico, Sims, and Cedric all out. Our squad is looking pretty damn good. Only got the Europa League to focus on besides the Premier League. So, I'll see you guys on the 1st of January. So, here we are on the 1st of January, just about halfway through the season. And not at the top of the table, which is quite frustrating. Not in the top four, but two points out of it. 33 points in fifth position. As long as we make the top four, then I'm happy. Stoke City are equal first with Manchester United. Taking a look at the drop zone, it is Burnley, Villa and Bournemouth all in danger. Sunderland, Swansea and West Brom, not too far out of it either. So a player departure here towards the back end of the window. Jake Heskeff off the QPR for 2.2 million. So absolutely nothing else happened in the January window, but most importantly, here we are. 38 games played. We have won the Premier League title by one point. But most importantly, next season, in season four, we are back in the Champions League. So we've had a pretty good second half to the season, it seems. Taking a look at the drop zone, it is Sunderland, Bournemouth, and Aston Villa all being relegated. Taking a look at the other tournaments, even though we win the Premier League, we can't make it to the last 16 of the FA Cup again. And it's the same thing for the EFL Cup. Why do we not do well in our domestic cups? Bayern Munich did win the Copa Europe, and Barcelona won the Champions League final on penalties. Hopefully, we'll be in the mix again next year. We made it to the last 16 where we were eliminated of the Europa League, but a Manchester derby in the Europa League final Man City winning that one. So we did exactly what we intended to in Season 3. Focus solely on the Premier League. Get back into the Champions League. That has been achieved. We're Premier League champions. And we are going to get back into the Champions League in Season 4. We're going to kick off this fourth season with a player departure. Lindelof, he was homesick and he wasn't really doing too well in our squad. So I don't think Liverpool is Sweden, but Lindelof is off to Liverpool. I mean, it's the old meme, isn't it? All Liverpool want is Southampton players. I'm happy to continue that tradition. Jordi Classy is another player that wanted to leave the club. He is up to Newcastle for 16 million. So since we've lost Lindelof, I thought, let's splash the cash. Let's go and get a world-class top-rated centre-back. So we're going to get Skodran, Skodran Mustafi. Always struggle to pronounce his first name. But we're bringing the 88-rated centre-back in for 54 million. That is really going to help our squad this year. So I thought to myself, we want to push for the Champions League title this season. We have the side to do it, but we need some insurance. So I'm going to sign ourselves a backup goalkeeper. Someone that I think can do a job or do a half decent job in case Leno is injured. That is Simon Mignolet picking him up for £8 million from Liverpool. Another pretty exciting insurance sort of player coming in. Stefan El Shirawi, 
83 rated is going to be our second choice left winger, but can really fill in in a couple of roles if we get some injuries. Welcome, El Sharawi. Just like the first three seasons, this fourth window, this fourth opening window has been an efficient one. It's been a really efficient rebuild so far. We've done the business we needed to. We've got in, we've got out. No impulse buys, just quality business. So that's going to conclude the window. Let's have a look at our Champions League knockout round now. Not knockout rounds, group stages. So our second attempt in the rebuild at Going for the crown, going for the challenge itself, the rebuild, the Champions League. This is our group. Group E, we have Sporting, Inter Milan, and Lech Poznan. So definitely an easier group compared to the first season. But we still need to be on our A game and hopefully put in some good performances. So as always, it's five minutes for me and about a second for you guys. Let's see how we went. We qualified, boys. We didn't finish top. Inter Milan beat us by a point, but we qualified well in advance over Lech Poznan and Sporting. So that means in the round of 16, we will be placing, uh, facing, I should say, Borussia Dortmund. If we finished where Inter Milan finished, we'd be taking on Arsenal. So I really don't know what the better option would have been, but we've got to focus on the task at hand now and hopefully take down the German superpower. And here we are on the 1st of January, just about halfway through the Premier League season. We are having an amazing season so far. We are on 43 points, and most importantly, we are in first position. The biggest thing is making sure we finish in the top four, at least the top four every season, because with the squad we have now, we need to make sure that we have a chance to complete the challenge every single season from now on. The three teams in the drop zone are Burnley, West Ham, and Wolverhampton. Unfortunately, Lavin Kazala came to us and said he wants to leave the club. He's homesick. I was thinking, I don't want to sell you, buddy. Then the board came to us saying we have to sell him. So unfortunately, Kazawa is off to Tottenham for 38 million. We now need to go out and get ourselves a brand new world-class left back. So, we're going to get Kazawa's replacement here. I wanted it to be another 86 rated player, but unfortunately, I couldn't afford... I didn't have the money to go in for Alaba, but we've gone in for someone similar. I guess as close as you can get name-wise. Alba. 28 million pounds, the Barcelona left back, joining his former teammate in Rafinha at Southampton. January has come and gone. Alba in, Kazawa out. Let's get into the Champions League knockout rounds. It is time. Can we go one step further in the Champions League? In season number two, we made it all to the way to the semi-final. Obviously, we have a much better squad this time around. My confidence level's much higher, but maybe it might be cockiness. Maybe we might play like crap. Akadi injured in the fourth minute. That's not the start we needed. Royce misses a penalty. Okay, okay, Buffal gets us the lead, but we can't take... Dortmund lightly. They've given us a bit of a scare. Ramsey makes it 2-0. That is what you want to see. Usman Dembele would be really high rated at this point. Of course, he just moved to Barcelona in real life. But the game doesn't know that. Can we get a third goal? There it is. James Ward-Prowse off the bench. 3-0. What a start. So, we've run into a bit of difficulty here. It may be a good thing that we had a 3-0 advantage in the first leg because... Mauro Icardi is out for three weeks. But most importantly, Shkodran Mustafi is out for three bloody months. So that might be the season for Mustafi. He might make it back for the semis or the final if we even get that far. We've got to focus. No! Van Dyson off. Gabbiadini misses a penalty to get us an away goal. Oh dear. We are in big trouble here. We need to just keep them out. Rafinha gets us an away goal. Okay, we're 4-0 up. I don't know how Dortmund haven't scored against us. We have a weak inside and we've got 10 men and we've still got a 1-0 advantage. That is a good sign. We've won 4-0. Jesus. Now this is going to be a real test for us. Manchester United in the quarterfinals. Now, at this stage of career mode, you guys should know that Manchester United tend to always have a ridiculous side. So, we've been drawn a short straw. Barcelona eliminated, I just noticed that. Same with Real Madrid. But, 
Let's see if we can defeat Man United and get into the semi-finals. Defensively, we're in real strife here. Of course, Mustafi, still out. But, De Vrij, who the, yeah, no, Van Dyke. I don't know why I said De Vrij. Van Dyke got red carded in the last game. So, Caceres and Yoshida are our two centre backs. Caceres I'm okay with, Yoshida not so much. Cardi back into the starting 11. And look at that side, they have Mares, Pogba, Harry Kane. Oh dear, we're in for a tough day out. And Bowler on the bench and Pogba gets them an away goal. Sterling does equalize, however, which is good to see. We can't allow them to score too many away goals and I always seem to jinx us. Don't make that a habit. Come on, can we get a second one? No, not for them. Pogba makes it 2-1. We have a big challenge ahead of us in the second leg. We need the FIFA gods on our side today. As simple as that, if we want to get through to the semi-finals, we need a big performance from the lads. We need players like Raheem Sterling, Mauro Cardi, and Buffal all to step up. We need two goals. We've got Van Dyke back, but we still don't have Mustafi. Please, lads. If we win 2-0, we go through. If we win 1-0, they go through. McCarty gives us the lead. De Gea injured. We've got a bit of a spark here. We need another goal. Rafinha makes it 2-0. Hold on, lads. Hold on, please. Get a third goal and make it comfortable. No, Harry Kane gets one back for them. At this stage, it's going to extra time. Can we peg a late one? No, we're off to extra time. Please, fellas, step up. Oh my god, I'm actually genuinely nervous right now. El Shirawi! 3-1! Hold on! Yes! Oh my god! This rebuild, this... Okay, across the four seasons, this rebuild has been genuinely insane. We're going to the semi-finals. What a freaking comeback. Holy shit, I'm going to lose my throat. We are taking on... Atletico Madrid. We faced them last year in the quarterfinals, I think it was. Can we defeat them in the semi-final? Now, the other semi-final is an all-French affair. Surprisingly enough, Lyon defeated Arsenal and PSG defeated Bayern Munich. But let's focus on ourselves. Let's focus on getting into the Champions League final. Well, I'm happy I went and got El Shirawi because... Buffal is out for eight weeks, so it looks like if we make the final, we're going to be playing El Shirawi instead of Buffal, but we can't focus on the final at the moment. Let's focus on the semis. We defeated them last year. Can we do it this time? Ericsson is an absolute gun in career mode. He, might he kill us? He might kill us in this one. Let's get some goals on the home one, but most importantly, let's not concede. If it's nil all, I'll deal with that. Half an hour to go. Is anything else going to happen? Are we going to get a lead? 10 minutes to go. Still nil all. Non-eventful game. It ends that way. Nil all heading into the second leg. I've, I've genuinely, genuinely like lost my throat. Lost my voice after that United game. We really are up against the odds in this rebuild. Another injury. Raheem Sterling this time. Only two weeks for the English international star. So... Hopefully, we can get through to the final with Nathaniel Redman in there, and he can play that final, and hopefully Mustafi is back for it as well. He's out for another three weeks, I think it is, but let's see if we can get an away goal on the board. Correa misses a penalty. That is good. Come on, fellas. Let's take the lead. DeVries injured Redmond. Nathaniel Redman takes the lead, but Party does tie it up. Leno injured. At this stage, though, we will go through on away goals rule. 10 minutes to go. Come on, let's hold on. Gabbiadini gets us through to the Champions League final. We have done it. Get in there. So it is going to be Southampton versus PSG. Neymar less, I might add, in the Champions League final. So a quick look at the rest of the tournaments. Benfica broke the European curse, defeating... Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Europa League final. We were able to go back-to-back -back Premier League champions. Only two losses all season. 86 points. That is good stuff to see. QPR, Burnley and Wolves all being relegated. The Community Shield, we lost on penalties to Chelsea. We actually did somewhat respectful, a respectful job in the FA Cup final. 
Lost, unfortunately, 2-1 to Manchester City, but at least we made it past the, la the last 16 this time. But not too good again in the EFL Cup, losing to West Ham in the quarters. And as always, before the Champions League final, we have a look at our squad report. Our squad report, our squad has been built somewhat decently. I would say we've been quite unlucky with injuries and suspensions and all that. Now, Jordi Alba isn't going to get to play in the Champions League final, which I'm gutted about. He is red carded. Fortunately, we do have Mustafi back. We have Leno back. We have Sterling back. I don't think, yeah, we, as you can see on the right, Buffalo is still out for another three weeks. So it's going to be El Shirawi in the Champions League final. Very happy that I picked him up. But fellas, let's get into the Champions League final right now. Season 2. Can we do it again in Season 4 in the final rebuild of FIFA 17? Let's find out. Sterling going there to Ramsey. We're looking to get an early goal in here. Here we go. This is decent. Sterling going to have a long shot, but it's a poor shot. Here we go. Sterling going to Barkley. We're passing it around quite nicely. Rafinha, Barkley, 101, slots at home. That is the perfect start to this Champions League final. Ross Barkley has been running around, passing it like an absolute machine. That is some lovely build-up play. Great pass, and that is 1-0 in our favor, 11 minutes into it. What a finish as well. They're passing it around. Don't let them equalize. Save from Leno Corner. Free kick here for PSG. They're going to go short to Paredes. We need to put pressure on them and try getting the ball back to hit them on the counter. That's good stuff there from Ramsey. Let's go on the counter. Passing it around. Akadi, great ball there through to Raheem Sterling. Sterling, we're going... Oh, we're just going to go with Sterling. Finesse is blocked. Follow up. Oh, I wanted to finesse that one and put it in the bottom corner. Oh, good stuff. No, they win it back though. It's an advantage here for PSG. They've got the numbers. We haven't got back defensively. They're passing it through. That could have been a handball. It's still play on, though. Puts it in the middle. Oh, my God. Here we go. Would be nice to get a second goal before half time. We're going to go up here to El Shirawi, who goes to Ross Barkley. Ramsey. Ramsey's kitchen nightmares. Goes to Ross Barkley. Long shot. Half decent attempt. Lucas up against Bertrand. Can't give him too much space. We're going to just close down Aurier. Well, at least try to. Serge Aurier. Going for a long shot, save from Leno. Good tackle there. Akadi. Still on. Going through to Barkley. Cutting around. Finessing. Oh, God. They're on the counter. That's a good ball. Van Dyke needs to get there. Don't foul Griezmann. What a tackle from Van Dyke. Him and Barkley have been our man of the matches for this final. If we can score off of the, that, this would be awesome. Still on. Go, Hoiberg, lovely ball out to Raheem Sterling. Puts it in there, finish it! Akadi, no! Final minutes here for PSG. They're going to be putting all their resources forward. We just have to play this smart and force them into a mistake. This has been such a tense affair. Good stuff from Van Dyke. It falls there to Rafinha. That could do it. We just need to hold on to possession. Great ball up there from El Shirawi to Akadi. Lovely move from Akadi. Let's just keep the possession. Barkley, lovely ball, El Shirawi in the middle, finish it, no, but that looks like it's going to be the final, Akadi hits it, save from Ariola. blow the full-time wrestle, West, with it, raffle, what the hell am I trying to say, wrestle, referee, there it is, Southampton are the Champions League winners, what a crazy match that was, so intense, I thought we scored the early goal, let's not blow it. We almost did, but that is going to be the final rebuild for FIFA 17. As I said at the start, 
thank you so much for your support throughout this series. It means the absolute world for me, to me. I'm so excited to show you what I have in store for FIFA 18. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video, but I'll let you guys soak up the scene. It has been Jaren HD here for the final time in FIFA 17 rebuilding. I'm out. Thanks. But I want y'all to listen. Cause my choice can determine my decision. Look when I'm rocking, they looking, they talking. Flow is like butter, I cook with it often. No satisfaction, I'm leaving it more. All of this action, I'm keeping it raw. I came to work, they came to party, they're all by myself. Call them and call it, blow open your mind. Look at my moves, what do you see when you look at my shoes? They don't see all of the walking it took to blossom from being a pawn to a rook and beyond. All black and I'm calm. King boy from here. See when you look at me now, everyone looking, they looking around. Ever since I put a foot on the ground, been in the kitchen, I'm cooking it down. What do you see when you look at me now? Everyone looking, they looking around. Ever since I put a foot on the ground, been in the kitchen, I'm cooking it down. One track mind, wanna roll with this boy, get fly. Wings up on the all black eye, when it's done, meditate all night. Shorty got a one track mind, wanna go just a couple more times. Wanna smoke just a couple more times, wanna blow just a couple more lines.